بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله continuing with our study of the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم سيرة النبوية the prophetic biography in the previous session we talked about how Amr bin al As رضي الله تعالى عنه accepted Islam and we talked about how that was shortly after uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions had gone to perform the Umrah, Umratul Qada, the makeup Umrah from the year of Hudaybiyah. And after they had returned back, how Amr bin al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we talked about his entire story, he leaves Mecca, goes to Abyssinia seeking asylum or refuge there because he's become convinced of the fact that inevitably the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Islam will come into Mecca and will... Uh, overtake Mecca, the people of Mecca will eventually accept Islam and come to Islam. And so due to that realization, he goes to Abyssinia, over there he finds that none other than the king and the Jashi, whose protection he's seeking, is also, has also accepted the message of the Prophet ﷺ. At that particular time, he really is forced to be honest with himself and comes to the realization that you have no, that, that there's no good reason that you have not accepted this, this, this religion yet. It is rather your stubbornness and your ego that is getting in your way and he casts all that aside and he goes and he joins the Prophet ﷺ in the city of Medina as a believer. But what we talked about at the end of the story of Amr ibn al-As was that on the way to Mecca, he meets up with Khalid bin Walid and Uthman bin Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Now that's where we are picking up this week. We're going to be talking about how Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Uthman bin Talha for that matter. But Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a bigger part of this story. And of course his Islam is a lot more well known and also has, um, is a lot more shocking if you will. So Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates his own story just like Amr bin al-As does. So he tells his own story. Now his story has been related in the book of Al-Waqidi and of course it's been mentioned by many of the other scholars of Sira, such as Ibn Kathir, uh, Imam al-Bayhaqi, Fiddala'il, Ibn Asakir mentions it in his book of history. So many of the scholars have mentioned this particular story. But Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu tells the story and he says that when Allah wanted khair, when Allah wanted guidance, when Allah wanted good for me, basically at that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had intended for me to embrace that which was good, the following occurred, this is what happened. He says that Allah put Islam into my heart. Qadafa fi qalbi al-Islam. Allah put Islam into my heart. وَحَضَرَنِي رُشْدِي And Allah allowed me to see the way, to find my way. Right? And he tells the story exactly what, how that occurred and how events unfolded. He says, فَقُلْتُ He says that I have witnessed every single interaction, every single conflict, every single um, engagement, that we have had with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have witnessed all of them and I have been present for all of them. And he says that every single time I come back from an interaction and engagement with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I think to myself, Arafi nafsi anni mudi'un fi ghayri shay'in. I really honestly feel like I am wasting my time, I'm wasting my life, I'm wasting these opportunities. I am investing into a failing endeavor, a failing business. I feel that every single time I come back, like I'm on the losing side. I'm just, you know, washing everything down the drain. So he says that, and I, and I come to further realize and become confirmed, you know, and, and really become more and more convinced of the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam will win out when everything is said and done. So he says when Hudaybiyah happened, he gives an example. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Sahaba came to perform Umrah the first time around, and they arrived at the place of Hudaybiyah, and he says that I went out there to kind of cut them off to meet them, you know, with the cavalry, 
with a group of riders from the Mushrikun. I had a cavalry with me and I went out there with the cavalry. So I met and I cut off the Prophet ﷺ and his companions at the place of Usfam. And I stood across from him and I obstructed his way. I stood in his path between him and Mecca. He says that he prayed Salatul Dhuhr with his companions in front of us. The two armies, we were there as a cavalry facing off, standing off against them, in between them and Mecca. And time for Dhuhr came and he gathered his companions together and they prayed Dhuhr. So he says that we were standing there and watching them and he says, فَهَمَمْنَا أَن نُغِيرَ عَلَيْهِمْ we really seriously considered the opportunity at that moment, at that time, to attack them while they were praying. But for some reason, we just, we didn't, you know, really, we didn't take any action. We just could not find the courage or the confidence to go through with it. So he says that, and وَكَانَ فِيهِ خِيرًا He says, and of course that was, better. I realize that now, that it was better that we did not do that. Nevertheless, at that moment, at that time, we really seriously considered it. We kind of started whispering to each other, we thought about it, but we just, for whatever reason, we did not pull the trigger. And that was good, he says. But he says that, the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ realized at that moment what we were thinking. Just from some of our whispering to one another, some of our movements, some of our anxiousness. He, the Prophet ﷺ read us, by the time they were done with Dhuhr afterwards, he kind of read us and he realized that something fishy is cooking here. And so he says that, then the Prophet ﷺ, when Asr time came, he did Salatul Khawf. And we talked about Salatul Khawf previously here, that it's basically the Qur'an lays out the procedure. It's a specific type of prayer that is performed in the battlefield. In a way where basically half the army prays, while half the army remains alert and on guard and ready to defend and attack if need be. And then they basically switch off accordingly. So he says that he performed Salatul Khawf. فَوَقَعَ ذَلِكَ مِنَّا مَوْقِعًا and he says that had a huge impact on us. Just the beauty of it, the, 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 the symmetry of it, how they were there, standing there, ready to fight, but at the same time, not ever willing to give up their devotion, their devotion to their Lord and Master, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It really impacted us. It affected me deeply. And he says that, and I, re, we, I, I kinda said at that time, look, he's protected and uh, they're not gonna let their guard down. So there's really no point to this anymore. So he says that we, we pulled back and the Muslim army kinda went around uh, our you know, cavalry and eventually when they went ahead further, then Quraysh came out, قَدْ صَالَحَا فَلَمَّا صَالَحَا قُرَيْشٌ بِالْحُدَيْبِيَّةِ وَدَافَعَتْهُ قُرَيْشٌ بِالْرَاحِي He says then when the Quraysh came out there and they signed the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah, and the Quraysh basically stood their ground in one of the terms of the treaty, which was that the Muslims would not proceed on into Mecca, but they would turn around and they would head back from here. قُلْتُ فِي نَفْسِي أَيُّ شَيْءٍ بَقِي he said, I kind of thought to myself, what more remains? Like what is holding you back? What legitimate reason do you have to not believe in Muhammad ﷺ at this time? Ain al madhab. Like where are you going? What are you planning? What's the game plan here? What are you thinking? I just became very critical with myself. Ilan Najashi, are you gonna go to Najashi? Are you gonna go to East Africa and try to seek asylum there? If Muhammad ﷺ comes back here and takes over Mecca. And he says, فَقَدْ إِتَّبَعَ مُحَمَّدًا وَأَصْحَابُهُ عِنْدَهُ آمِنُونَ He says that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ went there and were safe and sound. They were protected there. So how do you not know that that place might not become more sympathetic to Muhammad ﷺ? So you can't escape to Africa. He says, okay, فَأَخْرُجِ لَا هِرَقَلْ I'll go to Rome. And then he said, then I thought to myself, I'm going to abandon my own religion, my people, my way of life, and go and live in a strange land where I don't know them, I don't know their custom, I don't know their language, I don't know 
their religion. I don't know anything about these people. And essentially become some vagabond, become some outsider. When Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, of course his father is Walid bin Mughira, he's the son of a chief, he's one of the greatest you know, military masterminds that his people has ever seen. He's a man of great reputation and great respect. And so he's just like, that didn't sit well with me. So he says, will I just remain here and stay here and not go anywhere? And he says, I, I remain kind of in that turmoil not knowing what to do with myself, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Mecca the following year to perform the Umrah, Umratul Qada. So he said when that happened, many of the leaders of the Quraysh, as I talked about in Umratul Qada, they had left Mecca, they left Mecca, they said, we don't want to sit here and watch this whole you know, charade. So they basically left Mecca as a form of almost like silent protest. Even though they had a peace treaty, but nevertheless, so he says, I left Mecca as well and I didn't want to remain there. He says, my brother Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid, Khalid bin Walid's brother, was named Walid himself, Walid ibn Al-Walid. He says he had become Muslim. And he had gone to Medina. And he was amongst the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And he had come with the Prophet ﷺ to Mecca to perform Umrah. So when he came there, the Prophet ﷺ, you know, my brother actually, he says that he, he kind of looked around for me. Talabani falam yajidni. He looked around for me and he couldn't find me. So he wrote me a letter. And in that, he said that, he wrote to me, that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim amma ba'd. He said that, you know, he started with the name of Allah and he said, as for what follows, فَإِنِّي لَمْ أَرَى أَعْجَبَ مِنْ ذِهَابِ رَأْيِكَ عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ he says that I have never seen, my brother wrote to me, Khalid says, my brother wrote to me, I have never seen anything more strange, more surprising, more astounding than you not being able to figure out the truth of Islam. وَعَقْلُكَ عَقْلُكَ And it's like an expression in Arabic, and it, in, it, what it translates to as, what it translates to is that, and you are as intelligent as you are. You are as brilliant as you are. And in spite of your brilliance, in spite of your intelligence, you haven't figured out Islam yet? Like you haven't realized that this is, is, this is what you need to do, this is where you belong? That's the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then he goes, Islam, he goes on to say, وَمِثْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ جَهِلَهُ أَحَدٌ And something like Islam, that somebody would not be able to figure out with an intellect like yours, strange. And then he goes on to write, he says, وَقَدْ سَأَلَنِي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم عَنْكَ And he says, O oh brother, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked me about you. Upon our arrival in Mecca, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم inquired about you. He asked me about you. Where's your brother? وَقَالَ أَيْنَ خالد? He said, he. I told the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that no doubt God will bring you. God shall deliver him, shall bring him. Like meaning he'll come. He'll come, don't worry, oh Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I have full confidence, he will come. And the Prophet ﷺ at that time he said, مَا مِثْلُهُ جَهِلَ Islam." Someone of the caliber, the intelligence, the sophistication of Khalid, should not be confused by Islam, should be able to figure out what Islam is about. مَا مِثْلُهُ مَا مِثْلُهُ جَهِلَ الْإِسْلَامِ Someone of his caliber should be able to figure out Islam. It's a compliment saying that Khalid's way too intelligent to still be stuck in this situation that many of these other leaders are stuck in. And he says, وَلَوْ كَانَ جَعَلَ نِكَايَتَهُ وَحَدَّهُ مَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And if Khalid was to bring his talent and his ability to the Muslims, that would be good for him. وَلَقَدْ دَمْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ And the Prophet ﷺ said, And tell Khalid not to worry, we shall promote him. Meaning what? That Khalid need not worry that somehow he's gonna come to us and then, you know, like a lot of times, yes, there is a reality to people have earning their way, you know, quote-unquote, earning their stripes. Right? That's, a, that's a reality. 
But at the same time, we also have to be very mindful and we have to remember that oftentimes what happens is we use kind of earning your, earning your uh, position or earning your stripes as an excuse for like hazing people. Right? It's, it's like we almost like haze people. We try to break and humiliate people. And that's not our job to do. That's not our job to do. But the Prophet ﷺ taught us a very valuable lesson. He said, خِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَةِ خِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ إِذَا فُقِهُ The Prophet ﷺ said, the best amongst you in the times of ignorance pre-Islam are the best amongst you in Islam as long as they come to understand and realize the truth of Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, وَلَقَدَّمْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ Don't worry, it's not like we're gonna make Khalid, you know, uh, pick up you know, after the soldiers and we're gonna somehow like, you know, really rough him up and make him start from the mail room all the way at the bottom. Khalid is a brilliant military mind. He's a brilliant strategist. So what we're going to do with Khalid is that we will utilize his talents. He will not be wasted here. Tell him not to worry about that. So he says this is what the Prophet ﷺ has said. Then he said, فَاسْتَدْرِكْ يَا أَخِي مَا قَدْ فَاتَكْ he says that, so oh my brother, there's still time to make up for, there's still an opportunity to make up for lost time. Meaning you should have accepted Islam a long time ago. The gist of this is, Khalid, the Prophet is saying, Khalid is so brilliant, how has he not figured this out yet? He should come and join us. Don't worry, we're, we're, we'll put him in his proper position, we'll give him the respect that he deserves. So now he says, oh my brother, please even now, Capitalize on the opportunity to make up for lost time, lost opportunities. He said, فَقَدْ فَاتَكَ مَوَاطٍ صَالِحًا He says, you have missed some amazing opportunities. You have missed some amazing opportunities. Badr, Uhud, Khandaq, Khaybar. Like you've missed all these opportunities. So Khalid goes on to say that when the letter reached me, نَشِدْتُ لِلْخُرُوجِ At that moment I realized, and I said, that's it, enough is enough. Right, the compliments, and he actually talks about this, that the compliments and the words of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, وَزَادَنِي رَغْبَةً فِي الْإِسْلَامِ It increased my desire, my interest in Islam. وَسَرَّنِي سُؤَالُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم عني. And it made me so happy, and brought me such relief and confidence, that the Prophet ﷺ would ask about me, that he would ask about me. وَأَرَافِ النَّوْمِ Not only that, he says, I saw a dream then. كَأَنِّي فِي بِلَادٍ ضَيِّقَ مُجْدِبَ That I was in a small, very tight, narrow place, and it was all dry and cracked. The earth was dry and cracked, and it was very small and narrow. فَخَرَجْتُ So I leave there in my dream, and I arrive إِلَى بِلَادٍ خَضْرَاءَ وَاسِعَةً I arrive in a place that is green, that is lush, growing with vegetation, and is very wide and open and vast, like green rolling hills. So I go from this tight, dry, miserable place to this beautiful, green, bright, luscious place. I see this in a dream. So I said, إِنَّ هَذِهِ لَرُؤْيَةً This dream has real meaning. This dream is profound. So he says that when I arrived in the city of Medina, he's kind of telling the story forward, he's kind of flash forwarding if you will. We'll come back to this point. But he says, let me just tell you one thing real quickly. When I got to Medina, which I'm gonna to get to in just a minute, but when I did get to Medina, I said to myself, لا أذكرنها لي أبي بكر. I'm gonna tell Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu about my dream. So when I told him, his response to me was, مَخْرَجُكَ الَّذِي هَدَاكَ اللَّهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ This is Allah, this the interpretation of this dream, is that Allah guided you to Islam. وَالدِّيقَ الَّذِي كُنْتَ فِيهِ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ Because that tight, small, miserable place that you were in, that was that shirk, that was that idolatry, that worship of idols that you were trapped in. And then when Allah brought you out from there, and brought you into this vast, open, green, lively place, bright place, that, that is Allah bringing you to Islam. So he says, so now going back to my story, I see this dream, and now I'm even more fascinated by the opportunity, I'm intrigued by what lies ahead. 
So he says that, I made preparations that I need to go, I need to leave now. So I said, okay, who's gonna accompany me on this journey? It was a very long journey. It's not ideal for somebody to undertake this journey alone. And similarly, at the same time, I wanted to share this amazing opportunity with maybe one of my colleagues. Maybe some of my friends are feeling the way that I've been feeling. So let me try to see if I can gather, I can recruit someone else. So he says, I went to go talk to Safwan ibn Umayyah. And he was a good friend of mine. And I said, Ya Aba Wahab, that was his kunniya. Do you not see what our situation has become? Inna basically means we are a very small group of people who remain. Like those of us who are still standing firm and stubborn against the truth of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we are a very small group that remains. And akalatu ra's means a group of people that could eat out of one dish. It's like saying a group of people that could eat out of one dish. So it's just a group of us left. We're still standing here holding out. But what are we really doing? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ظَهْرَ عَلَى الْعَرَبِ وَالْعَجَبِ Not only the Arabs, even the non-Arabs are not coming to Islam. So we should go join Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow him. Because, فَإِنَّ الشَّرَفَ مُحَمَّدٍ لَنَا شَرَفٌ Because if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the honor will be our honor. His victory will be our victory. He says that he severely refused. He very adamantly, very, you know, vigorously refused this, this, this advance or this suggestion from me. He said that, لَوْ لَمْ يَبْقَ غَيْرِ مَا اتَّبَعْتُوا أَبَدًا He says, you, you say, just a small group of us remain? If nobody but myself, if there was nobody left but just me, I was the only one who remained, I still wouldn't follow Muhammad So he says, فَافْتَرَقْنَا I basically left him, and I realized to myself, I kind of thought to myself, هَذَا رَجُلٌ قُتِلَ أَخُوهُ أَبُوهُ بِبَدْرِ This is a man, his father and his brother were killed in the battle of Badr. This man, his father and his brother were killed in Badr. He was the, Safan ibn Umayyah was the son of Umayyah ibn Khalaf. So he says, I kind of dismissed it. I said, you know, he's still holding out his grudge, whatever. So I went and I met Ikrima, the son of Abu Jahl. So when I went to Ikrima, I said to him, just like I said to Safa, and I tried to recruit him. And he gave me a very similar response, saying, no, absolutely not. Even though Ikrima would accept Islam later on at the conquest, at the Fatsh of Mecca, which we'll talk about later, inshallah. So he says, I just told him, fuck to Ali. I said, listen, I realized uh, this was the second person I was telling now. I didn't want this news to spread too much. I didn't want to get in trouble. So I kind of just told the Ikrimah, I said, look, we go a long ways back. Our fathers were colleagues, you know, Ikrimah's father, Abu Jahl, Khalid's father, Al-Walid ibn Mughira. So we go way back. We grew up together. Listen, just don't tell anyone what I told you. So he said, don't worry, La I won't tell nobody. You mind your own business, I mind my own business. So he says, I went back home and I told, you know, I, I basically, I asked my servant, you know, kind of get my ride, my transportation ready. I packed my bag and I started to head out. And as I was heading out, I saw Uthman bin Talha, another leader of the Quraysh. So I said, you know, I said to myself, Inna hadha, and I, at this time I started realizing how many people are you going to go around and tell? So I said, let me just kind of keep this to myself. So I, but I thought to myself, إِنَّ هَذَا لِي صَدِيقٌ This is a very good friend of mine. فَلَوْ ذَكَرْتُ لَهُ مَا أَرْجُوْ He said, what if I was to kind of, you know, maybe just share with him what I'm thinking. But then I started to think to myself, his father was also killed in battle against the Muslims. So I decided, I'm not going to tell him. But then I thought to myself, he says, وَمَا so what's the worst that could happen? I've already departed from home. I'm already on my ride in my transportation. So even if he turns on me, tries to notify somebody, I'll be long gone before they realize what happened. So I said, you know what? Might as well. I threw caution to the wind. I went to him. I went and I just told him, look, here's the deal. Here's what I'm thinking. So I told him, إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ بِمَنْزِلَةِ ثَعْلَبٍ فِي 
juhrim. We are like a fox that is trapped inside of its hole. Like it's being hunted and it's gotten cornered and trapped in its hole. لَوْ سُبَّ فِيهِ ذَنُوبٌ مِنْ مَاءٍ لَخَرَجٍ And what they would do a lot of times when an animal would kind of go and like hide out in its hole, what they would do is they would bring water and they would just dump water into the hole. So what would, the animal wouldn't want to drown, so what would the animal do? Come out. Like whack-a-mole, right? So the animal would come out and that's when you grab the animal. So he said that, I went and I told Uthman bin Talha, we're like that fox hiding out in its hole, waiting for things to play out with Muhammad wasallam. One day somebody's gonna come and dump a bucket of water in here, and we're gonna have to poke our heads out, and that's when we'll be in trouble. So, and then I kind of presented him the same offer I had presented to the earlier two. So why don't we go, meet Muhammad wasallam, follow him, join with him, Look, we got no good reason to oppose what he says. We have fundamentally agree with his message. We've just been holding out due to the politics, the ego. So why, why not just put this all aside? فَأَسْرَ الْإِجَابَةِ He said he responded very quickly. And he said, إِنِّي غَدَوْتُ الْيَوْمَ وَأَنَ أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَغْدُوَ He says, I woke up this morning thinking to myself that I need to leave Mecca and go to Medina. He says that. Uthman bin Talha, Khalid is saying this too. He says, I woke up this morning thinking the same thing. I need to get out of here. And he says, in fact, why don't you come here? Let me show you. And he took me to the outskirts of Mecca. And there was a camel that was parked there, that was sitting there. Munakha. And he says, you see this? There was a place called Fakh. Bifakhin. Right? That place, it was like a valley outside of Mecca, Wadi Mecca. And he says there was a camel parked there sitting out there. And he says, you see that? That's mine with all the luggage on it. I'm already prepped. I'm already ready to go. So ajeeb that you're telling me this. That's me right there. I've been packed ready to go. I've just been lacking kind of just that courage to just go out there, jump on my ride and take off. So I said that, absolutely. Let's go. So he said, we set out right away. And you know, when he would, and he said we were traveling together, so when he would get ahead of me, he would kind of slow down. Because you know, sometimes the animal is kind of slow, fatigued, whatever. When he would get ahead of me, he would stop until I would caught up. And then when I would sometimes get ahead, I would slow down and then he would catch up to me. And we basically saying we traveled together. And when... We, we, we kept on traveling until finally when night time came, night time came, it got dark, we set up camp. When the morning time occurred, like the break of dawn, early in the morning, we got up to start, you know, preparing to go. We started packing up our stuff and we were getting ready to hit the road again. And lo and behold, we run into Amr bin al-As, he rides up on us. And he says, Marhaban bil qawm. He says, Welcome, welcome. Howdy, how's it going? So I said, Okay, so we said, Wabik, what are you doing here? Right? Everyone's kind of alert. What are you doing here? He says, Ila ina masirukum. Where are you guys going? We said, Ma akhrajaka. Why'd you leave Mecca? He says, Ma akhrajakum. Why did you guys leave Mecca? <laughs> right? So they're just going back and forth. They're like, What's up with you? What you doing here? He's like, where are y'all going? He's like, why'd you leave Mecca? Why did y'all leave Mecca? And he said, we're just going back and forth. Nobody wants to be the first one to kind of like let the, let the cat out of the bag. And finally, you know, I broke the silence and I said, the standoff. And I said, الدخول في الإسلام وإتباع محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم We are going to go enter Islam and follow Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. What? Now what? And he says, وَذَاكَ الَّذِي أَقْدَمَنِي That's exactly where I'm going, that's exactly why I'm going where I'm going. فَأَصَّحَبْنَا جَمِيعًا حَتَّى دَخَلْنَا الْمَدِينَةِ And he says, so we joined up together and said, let's, the more the merrier. Bigger party. So we all joined in together and we all traveled together until we entered Medina. Until the point that we reached, you know, on the outskirts of Medina. 
And the Prophet ﷺ was informed of our arrival. I mentioned that in the previous session, where Ahmad bin al as we saw a man pulling water out of a well, and he saw us, and he ran in, you know, kind of like, you know, very excited, like, look, who's guest? you won't believe who's coming. Ahmad bin al-As, Khalid are here. Ahmad and Khalid are here. Right, so he goes in and he informs everyone, informs the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ is very happy that we're arriving, and he tells everybody, and everyone's very excited that we're arriving. So we stopped, and we changed into the nicest clothes that we had, we became very clean and presentable. We went to the Prophet ﷺ, I found my brother there waiting for me outside the masjid, and when I met my brother, so you can imagine when a brother meets a brother, right? When a brother meets a brother, maybe it's been years they haven't seen one another. So he says, you know, we kind of, I hugged him and, you know, I kissed him and I said, where you been brother, I missed you and I started, and he was like, hey, hey, hey calm down now, we'll get plenty of time to talk. Asriya, go quickly now. We'll have plenty of time to hug it out and cry it out later, right? Right now you need to rush, you need to hurry. فَإِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ قَدْ أُخْبِرَ قَدْ أُخْبِرَ بِك The Prophet ﷺ has been informed of your arrival. فَسُرَّ بِقُدُومِكَ And he's so happy that you've come. وَهُوَ يَنْتَظِرُكُمْ And he's waiting for you. The Prophet ﷺ is the welcome party, the welcome wagon for you. So you go, go now, go, go. We'll get plenty of time to catch up. So he says, we started walking. فَأَسْرَعْنَا الْمَشْيَةِ We started like jogging, we started running, we started walking very quickly. And we entered into the masjid. فَطَلَعْتُ عَلَيْهِ And I saw him. And he says, فَمَا زَالَ يَتَبَسَّمُ إِلَيَّ حَتَّى وَقَفْتُ عَلَيْهِ And he was just smiling at us from the door. And we approached him as he was smiling at us, welcoming us. فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ بِالنُّبُوَّةِ And I said salam to him, while acknowledging his Prophet, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And the Prophet ﷺ رَدَّ السَّلَامَ بِوَجْهٍ طَلَقْ the Prophet ﷺ responded to my salam with a bright, beautiful, shining face. Like just smiling at us, welcoming us. Right? I mean, everyone's kind of been maybe seeing online and, you know, reading, or maybe you've gotten an email or seen on Facebook. They're talking about the super moon and how the moon's like very, very close to the earth and you won't see it this close for another, it's first time in whatever, 60, 70 years, right? The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Jabir bin Abdullah says that it was the super moon like this. The moon was very close one time. And everybody was just outside, just astounded, looking at it. I mean, imagine there's no light pollution, there's no you know, smog or environmental pollution. And you're out in the middle of the desert, and you stand out there, and then you see the super moon? It takes your breath away. So he said, we were all standing out there like, wow, subhanAllah. Right? Praising, glorifying Allah for creating such a beautiful thing. And the Prophet ﷺ came out to look at the moon as well. SubhanAllah. And when I realized the Prophet ﷺ was standing next to me, I kind of moved to the side and I looked at him, and I looked at the moon, and I looked at him, and I looked at the moon, and I said, yep, he's more beautiful than the, even the moon is. So that's, the Prophet ﷺ was looking at them. He says he was looking at us with that face. Welcoming us, come on, it's okay. I've been waiting for you. And he said, I said at that time, إِنِّي أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I said at that time that I bear witness, I give testimony, that you, uh, that there's no one worthy of worship except for Allah, and that you, without a shred of a doubt, are the messenger of God. And he said, Ta'al. He said, come here, come here. Like I stood there and I proclaimed my faith, my iman, and he said, come here, come here. Come here, let me talk to you. And the Prophet, and I sat down in front of him, he put his hand out, I put my hand in his hand, he clasped, clasped my hand with his other hand, held my hand like this. And he said, Alhamdulillahi ladhi hadaka. All praises for Allah, the one who guided you to the truth. Qad kuntu ara laka aqlan. Rajawtu alla yuslimika illa ila khayrin. He said, I always knew that you have been blessed by Allah with such intelligence that it would inevitably bring you to the truth and bring you to what's good. I knew it. I had faith, I had confidence. I said at that time, I'm sitting there accepting Islam, he's smiling, you know, welcoming, holding my hand, paying compliments. Such generosity, such graciousness, such kindness and nobility. 
And that only made me more ashamed of myself. So he said, I said, قلت يا رسول الله I said, O oh, Messenger of God, قد رأيت ما كنت أشهد من تلك المواطن عليك معاندا للحق. O oh, Messenger of Allah, you, it's no secret to you. You know very well how often I have stood against you. And how frequently I have fought against the truth. You know that. فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَهَا لِي Please, please, O Messenger of Allah, I beg you, ask Allah to forgive me. Pray that Allah forgives me. The Prophet ﷺ said, الْإِسْلَامُ يَجُبُّ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ He said, O oh Khalid, beloved, Islam removes, Islam eradicates, Islam wipes out everything that was before it. You sit here today with a clean slate. قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ SubhanAllah. He says, O Messenger of Allah, I believe you, but just pray for that. I need to hear you pray for me. I need to hear you pray for me. I need it. And it's almost like that human need of just consolation. To just be told everything will be okay. To be comforted, to be consoled, to be, to, to be told. Just pray that, say that, but I need you to pray for me. So the Prophet ﷺ made dua, he said, Allahumma ghfir li Khalid ibn Walid. Kullama awda'a fihi min saddin an sabilik. Oh Allah, please forgive Khalid bin Walid for all the times that he has stood and blocked people from your path, oh Allah. I want to point out something here. The graciousness of the Prophet ﷺ is so miraculous. We, in our frailty, in our deficiency, we sometimes can't fully even comprehend. We miss things. Let me point something out. I was pouring over this for like an hour. And it's just, it stands out when you look at it. What did Khalid say? What did Khalid say? I repeat. قَدْ رَأَيْتَ أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا كُنْتُ أَشْهَدُ مِنْ تِلْكَ الْمَوَاطِنْ عَلَيْكَ You. مُعَانِدًا لِلْحَقِّ He says, you have seen, you, you, O Messenger of God, how many times I have stood against you. مُعَانِدًا لِلْحَقِّ Also opposing the truth. So he is regretting that I have opposed Allah and the message of Allah and the truth. But what he's also regretting, what he's also apologizing for, what he's also lamenting is, I have disrespected you. I have opposed you. Listen to the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. First of all, he says, Khalid, you got nothing to worry about. It's a clean slate. When Khalid insists, listen to the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Allahumma ghfir li Khalid bin Walid. Oh Allah, forgive Khalid bin Walid. For what? كُلَّ مَا أَوْضَعَ فِيهِ مِنْ صَدٍ عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ Every time he has stood, blocking people from your path, O oh Allah. He does not mention himself. The humility, the graciousness of the Prophet ﷺ. Khalid is specifically apologizing for the times I did something to you. The Prophet ﷺ said, that's not even a thing. There's nothing to make dua about there. Fine, Allah has already forgiven you. But if you want some reassurance, I'll make dua that Allah forgives you for opposing the message of Allah. Me? What do you need to apologize to me for? That's my job. My job is to talk to you. To be kind to you, to try to convince you. And when you refuse and you resist, it's my job to keep on trying. And then when you oppose me and you confront me and you attack me, it's my job to not take it personally. Because it's not about me. If it's about anyone, aside from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the Prophet. He's a part of our faith, our iman. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. But he's teaching us, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's never about us. It's about the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's about the well-being of the people, the khair, the good of the people. We need to get over ourselves. It's not about us. Can you believe we turn it into it? We turn it, we, we make it about ourselves? The Prophet ﷺ would not make it about himself. Who are we? So that's, 
It's extremely profound. The Prophet ﷺ then says, وَتَقَدَّمَ عُثْمَانُ وَعَمَرُ Then Uthman bin Talha and Amr bin Al-As, they came forward. فَبَايَعَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. They both gave the oath of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ as I had done. And he says, وَكَانَ قُدُومُنَا فِي صَفَرْ سَنَةَ ثَمَانٍ and this arrival of ours was in the month of Safar, the second month of the calendar, the beginning of the year, in the eighth year of Hijrah. In the eighth year of Hijrah. And then he goes on to say, Fawallahi, Fawallahi, Ma kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'adilu bi ahadan wa min ashabihi fi ma hasbahu. And he says, I swear by Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor his companions ever ever held anything against me about what had happened previously. The Prophet ﷺ never made me feel like a second class citizen. He never made me feel like I was an outsider. Never ever. That day I came and accepted Islam and I became part of the family. And that never changed. So inshallah with that, we'll go ahead and stop and pause here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything we've said and heard. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn from these valuable lessons and the character of the Prophet ﷺ, adopt it into our own lives and be a source of good and guidance for all of humanity. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allah khairan.